Hey, Bob, what happens if the buyer decides they don't want to close? Well, that's an interesting question, Jason. When you, you sign a contract, the buyer promises to buy, puts a 10% deposit down normally, and the seller commits to selling for a certain price. Occasionally, the buyer, for whatever reason, willingly or unwillingly, uh, decides that they can't close on the property. So that becomes a problem. Uh, the only good aspect of that inability to continue with the purchase is that the buyer's exposure is only the 10% that they put down on contract. Now, 10% could be on a million dollar property, $100,000. Uh, so that is a substantial amount of money you know, to risk. Uh, but the purpose of a deposit is so that the seller will take the house off the market and devote themselves to selling the property to you. Uh, there is a clause in the contract that says uh, that the buyer's liability is just limited to the amount of the down payment. And that's sort of a good idea. In other words, the seller couldn't sue the buyer for anything more than the deposit. What happens at some point in the contract, there's a contract closing date, and somewhere after the contract closing date, you really have to set a closing and go to a closing. If you don't, the seller will send out a letter called the time is of the essence letter, basically saying close by such and such date or you're gonna lose your deposit. The buyer then will employ a couple of different techniques to try to thwart that. Ultimately, a day will come and go when the buyer should have closed on the property and the seller will try and keep the deposit. Needless to say, both sides will sue each other. They'll have different ideas as to what their uh, defenses are. And ultimately, what we suggest is that the buyer realizes that if he's at fault for not continuing with the contract, probably should enter into some heavy negotiation to try and resolve the issue uh, and settle the issue either by uh, offering the seller some money, not the whole 10%, but some amount of money, not the whole 10% that will uh, satisfy the seller and at least uh, you know satisfy the seller so that they don't feel as though they lost everything if the deal doesn't go through. The seller, of course, should also realize that uh, they're probably not going to be able to resell the place if there is litigation going on. So there is some motivation on the seller also to accept less than the 10%. If both parties don't see that as reasonable, uh, their respective attorneys will end up in court arguing and there is a, a, a definite risk that the buyer may lose his 10% deposit.